Boys and girls, welcome to today's lesson. As I said earlier on, I explained to you what we we're going to do. So I'd like you to all try to follow what I'm doing on the board. It may be hard, but try to do it because it's going to help you to improve and understand coding and how it works. And I'm going to be re revising a little bit on that, what we did before we went on holiday. And the reason being that we may have forgotten Pity Dakota's not here because she's good with HTML, as many of you are. Now look over there. I'm putting a tag over here saying HTML to show that that's the type of code we're talking about here. Hypertext markup language. And we're going to put a forward slash HTML to show that we are with the beginning and the ending tag. We did that before and I did show this to you. So... Quickly type that in. If you know exactly where your HTML is saved on those tags, you can just add it in like that. And now we're going to put in what's called a header. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, four on my space bar, and I'm going to put head, and then I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and I'm going to put forward slash head to show that that's the header part of my HTML. I'm doing it a little bit different to what I did it before. And this is the header section now we're going to add the body and i'm going to do four spaces body that's the body section and those of you who know brackets would be quite familiar with the way that you do it in mathematics these tags are almost like brackets so we've got a header and we've got we've got a head and we've also got a body we've got two parts that fall within our html and we all know that last term we talked about a thing called JavaScript. And we're going to also look about, we're going to add that back into our content for today's lesson. Just to let us understand and revise what that was about. So in the header section, I'm going to write a title. I'm going to go like this, title. And that's going to be our tag that's going to be in our web page. Then I'm going to go title. Yes, I forgot the forward slash, clever. Was that Marco that said that? And then I'm going to go revision of JavaScript. Revision on HTML and JavaScript. And we all know that JavaScript is, is coding that's found within the HTML. So I'm writing revision. Let's just go revision on JavaScript. So we'll just go like that. You can type in anything you want, really. It doesn't matter. And that's what we did last time we meant we said that you've got our header and look what's found within the header the title and i'm going to just quickly save this and you will probably be able to see what it'll look like in my html watch carefully save as and we'll save it on our desktop and i'm going to give it a name my revision work i'm just going to call it that dot and we know that that's the extension that comes after this, the type of file that we're talking about HTML. So it's HTML. So I'm going to type my revision work HTML. And that HTML there, Marco, is indicating uh, that we are dealing with a particular file that will be read by what? Charlie, what would read an HTML file? Okay, but which program, what type of program? Chrome, Safari, and all those are called? Yes, Firefox included. Save, Edge as well. We've got browsers would read this. So did you see what I did? I went file, save as, and I just added the HTML extension at the end after the point or the dot. And I saved it. I'm saving it, and I can even open it, and if you see here it is, it says my revision. If I click on it, it's giving me the Chrome icon. Why is it giving me the Chrome icon? Because that's my, that's where it's going to, it's going to open it up with my default browser. Okay, let's open it. I click on it. It's opening it up. Now, there's nothing on my page, but look, it says revision. Look at the tab, revision on JavaScript and we can right click and we can view the page source and we can see look there is our code line one says HTML line five is going to say the end of our our ending tag 
And there's our header with our title in it. And the body still needs to get something written in there. We'll put that in in a minute. Okay, so let's close that and let's return back to our notepad. All right, so we're moving on. So we've got this. I'm just going to add, call this revision because it didn't really show everything in that tab and just call that revision. I hope you're all following me. Okay, because you've got to follow it. And if you can't follow it too well, I would suggest you go home and watch some of the YouTube videos to get some idea of how it's done in practice. So you really become outstanding coders. You don't want to be do computer coding while you're doing a game like some of you are. I'm watching you now and I'm saying it's really not, you're not with me. You're busy doing other things. So that means you're actually wasting a great deal of time. You're coming into the computer room and you're not really focusing on the valuable content being given to you. So I can't moan at you, but I would suggest since you're such smart people, or maybe you're not because you don't understand the value of what's being given to you, that you make the decision on how you're going to learn. Okay, make always the best decision. And I see some of you nodding your head and continuing with your game. So here we're going to add in our scripting section. And I'm going to go down like this. Go four, tab four times. I'm going to type in script, script. And then I'm going to type in the ending of the scripting section, forward slash script. And that's showing where our JavaScript is going to be found. And we all know that we showed you in the last lesson, two forward slashes like that means we are commenting our code and comments means when the computer reads downward it passes through our code it gets to that line over there and it will know that this is going to be a comment and the computer will understand that it's not really computer code it's just there to explain what the program does so i'm going to write practicing javascript variables now, you don't need to write that because your typing is probably not as fast as mine. And if so, you find you don't want to get bogged down like typing too much. I'm just showing it to you as an example. So that's showing my computer will not read those two lines. It will, not, it will know that these two lines are just comments and they're not code. Now, very often computer coders will even comment out code to... Why would they comment out code? Why would sometimes, if I want to read, I don't want the computer to read a certain line, I would put two slashes, forward slashes, before my code. Why would I do that, Kush? To, to avoid reading that line. Good answer. All right, so now I'm going to add in some variables, and we're going to... Do you, any of you remember what, how we declared a variable? Do you remember how we did that? With a VAR. But first we're going to go document. So document. And that's talking about our HTML document. This whole thing. Now in our document, we want to write something. So we're going to do a method called write. And then we're going to just write that in. Document. In the document, we've got a method called write. So our document's got certain things it can do. We want it to write something. We're going to go round brackets. And then I'm going to go, hello, Charlie. Uh, I just, hello, Charlie and Kush. Kush, sorry, I spelt your name wrong, I think. And then I'm going to go round brackets. And I'm going to go semicolon, like that. And that's basically saying to my computer, in the document, I want you to do this. A process, I want you to write. And that's calling a function, hello, Charlie and Kush. So my computer must write this in the document over here, the document section. So our computer is expected to do that. 
Now, if I put these two lines like this, forward slash, forward slash, what would it do? Kush, what would happen if I add these two comments in front of it? Kush, you're very smart. So let's test that. Look over here. If I say forward slash, I'm going to take these two comments out. I'm going to save this. Now watch when I save it. File, save as, and I'm going to save it again over the other one. Save. Do you want to replace it? Yes. Now we're going to open it. Just have a look. We're going to open it in desktop. There's our revision. Over here, my revision work. I'm going to click on it. And look, it says, hello, Charlie and Kush. So when we go back to our code, over here, you can see there's no comment. So it says, it's writing it in the document. Now watch when I comment it out. I'm going to put those two forward slashes in front of document. Now I'm going to save it. Save as. Actually, I should have just gone save. Now, watch. If I go here and I open my desktop revision and I just keep it open, I'm going to go with the refresh button. So look, there's nothing there. Now watch if I open it uh, again and I take away those comments and I save. You can just go Control S. Control S, I'm saving it. And then I go back to my document and I'm going to press the refresh button. Look, hello, Charlie and Kush. So in other words, it's now reading my source code. If I go right click, view page source, you can see that hello, Charlie and Kush is not commented out. If I put those two slashes, forward slashes in front of it, I've commented them out and you won't then see it. So that's quite important that you understand these comments. Now, m most people say, why must I comment? It's really important in computer coding. It gets complicated and sometimes you just got to remind yourself what it's doing or you're working in a team with a lot of other programmers and you need to then tell them what's going on in the code. So that commenting part is rather important. Okay, remember HTML means hypertext markup language. And remember that we save it with HTM or HTML. Those are the extensions. All right, and those are showing that we're dealing with HTML. But remember in Notepad, guys, what we're using them at the moment, what is its native file format? Native is what it's normally going to save as a text file. Right, so when you're in a, this Notepad and you save just straight away, if you don't put that .html in your file name, like I've done over here, it would save it as .txt, as a text file. And then it won't read it as HTML. So you've got to make sure that you type that HTML at the end of the file name when you save it. Okay, so this is pretty much your HTML document. Remember to lay out your code neatly. Very often, the logical understanding of your code is how you lay it out. If you have it all messy and everything doesn't fit wonderfully together, it's very difficult to understand. And people will get confused and you might even find at, at times that you don't even know what's going on and it ends up that it's broken. Your code's not really working and it can be very frustrating. So computer programming, you've got to be really organized and you've got to know exactly what you are doing. So try ensure that your code is neat. Copy what I the way I lay it out because this is normally how a good programmer would lay it out. They try to be fairly structured. They indent. They leave spaces and tabs in to show the spaces between their codes. Look at that. I've got a space there. And it helps you to understand, especially when you do loops and things like that. Okay, now remember in the scripting part is where JavaScript lives. This is where we find our JavaScript code. In the scripting part that I'm showing you here, that's where JavaScript's home is. That's where the code's going to be found. Okay, 
just trying to make it a little bit bigger. That fits beautifully, doesn't it? All right. And remember, your JavaScript can be understood by most browsers. Firefox, Safari, Edge, all of those, Chrome would be able to read this. So that means if you make your programs in HTML, it's pretty easy to spread your code and other people can read what you've made. And some people have even made quite interesting games using JavaScript and HTML. There's lots of stuff. Most of Purple Mash is using JavaScript. So you guys are learning what the little bit of the language what is used in the Purple Mash developers, what they use. So it's powerful stuff. You can see that there's some amazing things in Purple Mash that you can do if you've got JavaScript and you use JavaScript. Okay. Everyone with me at this stage? Okay, well, look, I'm, I'm not going too fast because you can just copy it from the board. It's there on the board for you. Okay, now I'm going to go to commenting out this document. Right, I'm copying that out. I'm going to comment it out and I'm going to go to the next line and now I'm going to bring in a variable. Now watch carefully as we bring in a variable. VAR, I said it earlier, is your variable and I'm going to call it, Give me. Uh, let's give it my sentence. Okay, I'm just going to call my one like that my one equals and then i'm gonna go like this monkey just gonna type in you can type in any word monkey so just type in a word and then what comes after the this after monkey at the end after the speech marks semicolon so just get used to that that's just part of the syntax we're declaring a variable called monkey. Now, monkey is a string. If I had gone like this and taken out monkey and go forward slash and make monkey 12, then my one would be 12 would be a number. And then it would be that that would be a number. That my variable, my one, will understand itself as a number. So we've got my variable, my one is 12. So let's go with that. I'm not going to use monkey. I'm just going to comment monkey out. Then you see I put those two lines, forward slashes, two of them in front of monkey to show that it's not going to be read. My code's going to, it's going to read down like this. It's going to pass down. It'll read this line. But when it gets to those two forward slashes, it'll know that that's comment. And then it won't read that. This part over here will not be read as code. So I'm going to go with my one equals 12. So we've got that our computer understands we are reading a number. So we've got a number that's been read as that, as 12. All right, now we'll declare another one. Let's go VAR my two. And then we'll go equals, and you can call it anything you want. And I'll go 24 and colon. So we've got two, two numbers that are being read as variables. And we're going to bring in this document stuff just now. You'll see what we're going to do. Now we're going to go. We've got two variables being, being declared. Variable 1 is called my1. And variable 2 is my2. And that's 12 and 24. So we're declaring two variables in the scripting part. Okay. Variables would be declared there. So we've got this one, and then I'm going to type in a comment, and I'm going to go, another monkey. And that would be showing that it's just going to be a comment over here, and then I'm going to bring that in just now as my, my two will be another monkey, and my one will be monkey. So I'll just show you in a minute how that works. So we've got two variables that have been declared at this stage, my one and my two. Now we're going to go with the third one. We go variable, and I'm just going to call this one ZZZ. Call it anything you want. Equals, and I'm going to go with my one. Look at this, my one plus my two. 
like that. And then I'm going to go with semicolon. And we're going to then just leave it at like that for the moment. Now we know that 12 plus 24 is going to give us 36. So my one, we're using this word, the variable, to mean 12. And my two to mean 24. So it's interesting that ZZZ is going to be my one plus my two. And it's going to give us an answer. And then we're going to bring in this part of code over here. So we're going to go copy this. What's that? But uh, I'm going slowly so you can catch up. Okay, now I'm going to just take this out and I'm going to type in ZZZ. So I'm going to ask my document to write ZZZ. Now we are wondering what is going to be ZZZ. Well, the ZZZ is going to be my one, which is 12, plus my two, which is 24. So ZZZ should actually read as 36. It should just have a little 36 written in it over there. So we'll, we'll test that if it really works and see if we get up, can get 36. So I'm going to save it. File. Save. And don't worry, Kush. We'll get back to it so you can see it in a minute. Now I'm going to open this and I'm going to redo it. Look, there it is. Just going to go over here. And look over here, 36. Look at that, guys. 36. So if I go back to my code and have a look at my code, view the page source, look what it's done. My one is 12 plus 24 is 36. And look, ZZZ is being read as 36. So there is our 36. So what it's doing is calculating. It's adding the two numbers together. Open up my code. It's adding the two numbers are being added together. So let's bring in the monkey and other monkey. So what I'm going to do is copy this. Copy that. And I'm going to co comment out 12. Forward slash. And I'm just going to stick monkey over there. And then I'm going to stick another monkey in front over here and then I'm going to comment out that 24 with a forward slash just going to make everything a little smaller uh, Kush would you please tell the learners that are coming in here they must go please uh, no one must come in here while we're doing coding okay guys please be strict um, Charlie as well um, the monitors because while we while I'm streaming you also you can kick people out and just say look they mustn't come okay so if look over here if I say monkey and then I write, uh, and then, and another monkey. Then I would say that we're going to get two sentences that ZZZ does not represent numbers anymore because they commented out. Look, I've commented them out over there because they've got those double slashes before that I've commented them out. So it should read monkey and another monkey. Let's see if it does that. If I go file, save. And I'm going to open my browser over here. And look what I've got. I've still got the 36. But if I go on the reload this page, it'll update the code. So re update the code. Look what it says. Monkey and another monkey. So it's actually reading the string. String just means alphabetical. Okay. So if I go over here, bring in a space over there, it'll read that little space as a space. So if I go file and I go save, then I could go like this, open my browser, reload the page, and look, it's corrected that, monkey and another monkey. Now, that's very, very important that we all understand that what we have here is our code is reading that section over there. Everyone with me at this stage? So what it's understanding is that here it's talking about letters, what's called a string in computer language. When you go to high school, you're going to see the other guys, are going to, they're going to say, oh, this is a string. We're talking about a string. A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, but a letter of the alphabet. And then over here, this is numbers. Now watch when I go like this. If I change this monkey to be 12, and I change this to be 24, 
and I go space, I go 24. What is it going to do now? Because we've got these speech marks, computer, our JavaScript understands we're talking about a string. So it's understanding those two numbers are not really numbers, they're strings. So watch what it's going to do. I'm going to save. And it shouldn't, it should, it's not going to calculate like it normally would. I'm going to go reload the page. Look what it's done. One, two, two, four. What's it done? Let's have a look at our code. We go to, because they are strings, look what it's done. Because there's speech marks, it knows that that 12 is not a number. We must understand that as a string. And because this has got speech marks by the 24, my 2 will be read as a string. And when two strings are joined together, they get stuck together in such a way that 1, 2, and 2, 4 sticks together, and they're just like stuck together. They're not gonna add, it's not going to add them. But if I take away those speech marks, let's just do that. If I go to there, and I return back here, and I take away those speech marks. Look at that. Take away the speech marks, and I'm making this an integer. Again, my computer, when my browser reads the code, it'll know that that's a number. It's not a string. So I go file, save, go back to my browser. I'm going to revise. And watch, I'm going to reload this page. And look, it's 36. So what it's done is made this into a 36. Our computer has now understood that that 36 is two numbers added together. That is so amazing. That computers understand what you're talking about. Now, if I go like this, and I change that plus to be a star. Now, what will it do? We all know that a star is telling the computer we got multipl multiplication, 12 times 4. So I go file, save, and look at this. We reload, and look, 288. We have 288. That 12 times 24 is 288. But look if I go like this. If I go, I'm just going to comment out that, forward slash, two forward slashes, and I'm going to go like this, plus, plus. That should increment this. So it should mean that my 12, my one, my one will become 12 plus 1. Let's see if it does that. Save, open my browser, reload the, play, the page, look at the 12. It's in 12. It's still on 12. Now, why is it doing that? We'll see. Because remember, it reads over here, and it goes, my one, ZZ, my, my one, is ZZZ, is my one, and then it should be over here. Look over here, plus, plus, and then we go my one. Let's see if that works. Now, that means it's going to increment it over here, 12 plus one. We see if it works. And we experiment, and it's not understanding what I'm talking about. Well, we'll get back to that. I just was trying something that I wanted to, I thought it would work like that. So let's take that away if I put one plus. Now, guys, you can experiment. Let's just do one plus one, plus one over there, 12 plus one in that variable. And we go file, save, and we go over here. And look over there, 13. So what it's done over here, and we'll just have a look at our code. It's gone 12 plus 1. It's, it's incremented the 12 plus 1, 13, in, the, in that part of the code. And then it's fed it into my 1 over here. Remember, my ZZZ is my 1. And what is my 1? 12 plus 1. So it becomes 13. It's quite amazing, guys, that we start understanding how computers read code. I'd like you to go and practice a little bit more, experimenting with lots of different things, with first of all looking at variables, declaring them, where would they go 
in the scripting part of your code. So declare them there with a VAR. Then you name your variable. Look at I called mine my1, my2, and yeah, I called it ZZZ. Three variables. And remember, if it's got no speech marks, then it's either indicating that it's a number. If it's got speech marks, like in this called monkey, then you're indicating we're talking about a string. And remember, if, if your numbers have got a string around them, they've got a, speech marks around them, would indicate that numbers can also be read as a string. So we have the semicolon after declaring your variables. Don't forget, you must have a colon. A semicolon must be there. And that semicolon comes like a full stop comes at the end of a sentence. So you declare your variable, name it, equals, and you give a semicolon. And then remember, you can use document to write in the document. What you want to write in the document would go in the round brackets. And then it will follow on with a semicolon. And this is found in the body section, the script section is found in the body section boys and girls i think we'll leave it at this particular point it should revise a lot of what we did previously a big thank you to all of you for listening and especially thank you to the learners who were following because you're serious and probably one day you will probably see how wealthy you derive the benefits of learning now. You might think, okay, why should I do that? But if you derive the benefits, you will benefit hugely by learning computer coding. It's quite complicated and sometimes in high school you're going to get all these people who don't understand but you will understand and you're going to be the person that's going to be asked to help everybody else who's stuck because computer coding does sometimes get very complicated. All right, I will leave it at that point, but thank you very much to all of you, and a big thank you to Charlie, who was monitoring the doors, Kush, who helped out, and that other young lady, what was her name? That's the other leader in the group. All right, so we have another grade five. I just don't know her name, but she was also marvelous. Thanks, guys. Remember that all computer lessons are now on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and also remember on Thursday we've got at 6 o'clock Donya and Jordan are going to be giving a speech about coding. They will be addressing the parents of our school. We wish them all the best for that. It's the speech they did for the Dominican Challenge. I'd like to see some of you at this talk to offer up your support for them.